What if I told you the Bible is not a book of fairy tale stories and moral analogies? It is the miraculously preserved record of God's involvement in man's reality. Through it, God shares with us his deep love for humanity, regardless of our mistakes, sins, and insanity. You see, it's not just a book of do's and don'ts for you and I, or a lesson in ethics so I can be a good person before I die. It is the message from God that this world has sold me a lie. But Jesus came to share the truth, show the way, and give eternal life. Yes, the Bible reveals the sin nature within every man, yet its purpose is not to say that you're worthless, but a treasure designed by God's very hand. When God says that He loves you, He means right where you stand. It's His immeasurable love for you that orchestrated this master plan. From the very beginning, loving you has been a speciality. He chose your eye color, body type, and personality. He made you unique and gave you a nationality. Though you may feel unimportant, you're His masterpiece in actuality. Fast forward to Jesus hanging by three nails on a tree, gasping for air. He was barely able to breathe. He cried out, Father, forgive them. He was praying for you. And for me, this Jesus pleading with God to make us blind men see. I mean, this was God's only son separated from his father's presence, forsaken and disconnected so that I could be spared my sentence and adopted into sonship through the simple act of repentance. Because of Jesus, not by merit, I've received this acceptance. Did I mention this good news is not for me only, but for all of God's creation? that through His love He sent His Son to bring you into salvation. He accepted every beating while knowing many would reject this reconciliation. But to Jesus, you were worth every moment of His torture in order to secure your emancipation. Oh, and three days after Jesus had died, by the power of God, He was brought back to life. And as He walked out from the tomb, Mary looked at Him with her own eyes and ran back to the disciples to share Jesus is alive. Notice God entrusted a woman to be the first person to tell the guys. Well, the disciples laughed and thought, this woman has lost her mind. Even the disciples still had doubts after all this time. But shortly after, Jesus appeared to them all and said this line, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age as he ascended on high. He said these words to remind us he didn't just leave us all alone, to sit somewhere far away from us on his heavenly throne. No, to be in touch with my God, you don't need some spiritual telephone. You simply have faith in Jesus' name and He'll make your body His home. You see, God's love has nothing to do with my good behavior and everything to do with His unconditional loving nature. The Bible says we're like lost sheep hunted by wolves in a pasture and that Jesus is the Lamb of God ripped apart in order to save me from disaster. And like all good shepherds, God gave his life for his sheep. He came humble and meek, fresh meat for them to sink in their teeth. I made weak. I cannot hide what is happening to my heart underneath. Jesus is bringing a life, the dead man inside of me, and all I have to do is breathe. And from this breath, God breathes life into you by the words that I speak. But don't be confused. My words have no power and my talk is cheap. If this was all dependent on my ability, I would put you to sleep. It's the one named Jesus whose talent far exceeds any earthly MC, whose kingdom is not one of word, but of power, who's ready and willing to set you free from bondage at this very hour. Don't wait another second. The fruit this world offers you will always turn sour. It will never fill that emptiness you feel when you question life alone in the shower. I'm here to warn you that this world will leave you destitute and naked. It's had you deceived by a 2D image on a screen since temptation first said, hey kid, and now you're stuck in a vicious cycle of recreational sex and getting wasted. Like, wait, I thought I'd be happy saying YOLO and doing everything Drake did. Or maybe you fell for religion and believe grace is based on good behavior, thinking if I go to church, memorize every verse, then I'll be good enough for my Savior. Forgetting grace is a gift and there are things more important to your maker, like loving the sick, poor and forgotten, the widow, fatherless and the stranger. See, if I have not love, it's just self-righteous moralism. And if I'm living this way, I'm in direct opposition to the God who gave His Son for all, who made loving you His primary mission. This is why I believe in Jesus, because Jesus is greater than religion.